Hello, great people. Good to see you tonight. Welcome to the Harv watching online. We welcome you. Are you ready? It's been a September to remember, but it's not over yet. Amen. God's got more. Are you ready for more?
free has liberty whom the sun sets free is free indeed whom the sun sets free has liberty yeah, yeah, yeah. because of what you did on the cross we can have joy yeah. Woo. Yeah. because of what you did on the cross we can have peace yeah. your love is taking chains off me I wonder is there anybody in the room who the love of God has taken chains off of you he's lifted your sin and your shame taking chains of worry and fear and regret off of you is that anybody's testimony come on let heaven know that you know that he's God and he's good and he's grateful you're grateful that he's taking chains
want every hand in this room raised. You're breathing new life into dry bones. I hear the echo, the sound of heaven's song. Your spirit's calling me. I know it's time. chosen to worship with us tonight. You may be seated and we have just a little something we want to share with you. It's a September to remember at World Harvest Church, and on Sunday, September the 30th at 10 a.m., it's a day for the whole family as we celebrate Tailgate Sunday. Come to church sporting your favorite football team for the chance to win a family four-pack of OSU tickets. In Kid Harvest, your children will enjoy the big game where they learn that when they put God first, victory is always won. After service, we're firing up the grill and enjoying a family-friendly tailgate party with food, football, and fun. Kids can meet Brutus the Buckeye and enjoy our football-themed challenges or jump around in bounce houses. So don't miss out. Tailgate to church on Sunday, September the 30th at 10 a.m. 
All right. Hey, good evening, World Harvest. How are you doing? Man, I can tell you're ready tonight. We are in revival. No, we are in revival. It is not a season. Revival is eternal because it's the presence of our Father God. And He is here. Come on, a big praise to our Father. Thank you for what He is, who He is, and what He's doing. I'm so thankful that you are here tonight. We're in our September to remember what a change because we know that we are the clay and our Father is the potter. We're His masterpiece. And He's changing us to be like Jesus more of a day, every second, every heartbeat. So I'm so glad that you're here. I want to say a great big hello to all our guests. It may be your first time in World Harvest Church, or you may have been here last Sunday or the week before. Welcome. This is your home. Father God has brought you here. We are a family that loves God. We love each other. And we love the people, the lost and hurting, that don't know Jesus yet. And so we're so thankful that you are here. On the big, amazing screen behind me, there's a, a number that you can text all of our guests because you're a VIP. And as you get to do that, you get, you know, just, it's real, real easy to do. You get on, and as you go through it, we can get to help you. We get to know you. And there's a special gift from our Pastor Parsley for you. So I want you to do that because you're not a visitor anymore. You're part of the family. So thank you very much. We love you. Let's give our guests a great big hey. Thank you for being part of what God's doing. We really do love you. You may say, I didn't bring my phone tonight, Pastor Kel. Well, in front of you, there's this card that looks just like this. And I, I, would, I would like, you to, like, to, like, like for you to, to grab that. And you can fill that out, guess. And you can, you can do that on, all online. We're so glad you're with us. And in Elkhart, we love you. And we want you to take that. And you can fill it out and drop in the offering bucket in just a, just a minute. And as we grow, we got something really exciting here at World Harvest Church on October 14th. Everybody say October 14th. It's called Next Steps. We get to find out how special Jesus is, how special we are, and how special everyone around us is. There's 600,000 people within about a 15-minute drive. How do we reach out and how do we touch them and love them, bring them to Jesus? That's all a part with a special luncheon after October 14th. And we want you to be part of it. It's a lunch with Pastor Parsley, the leaders of this church. And it'll be about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. We get to find out how to grow in Jesus, how to grow with our gifts and abilities, how to be involved and how to walk in that destiny and purpose God has for us. Again, because it makes it so simple here at World Harvest. We love God and we love people. We want you to be part of that. You can fill out that VIP card that is there and say, I'm gonna put my name and those that'll come in my family with me or my friends. We want you to do that or when you walk out, we've got our centers out there and our connect centers. You can go to see one of those and fill out your name and we want you to be there. I want to reserve a place for you because I want to get to introduce myself and our whole leadership team and Pastor Park is going to be there. We want you to be there too. All right. October 14th. We had a real neat big screen. Uh, it just exploded at the end there that this Sunday we have our tailgate Sunday. Oh yeah. And the neat thing is, yeah, we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to have, we're going to have at the end, you know, all the, all the great games and excitement for the uh, for our children and for families. We're going to have the barbecue and all that great stuff. And there's going to be prizes. You can win tickets to OSU game and wear, wear, your, wear your favorite jersey. But the most important thing is this, that we want to bring our friends and our family and maybe a few enemies won't be enemies anymore. And bring them to church on Sunday, 10 a.m. Pastor Parsley's ready, on fire. And I know that this altar is going to be filled with hundreds giving their life to Jesus. But yeah, Jesus has paid the price for it. But it's a, it's a, it's a partnership. It's Jesus and us. We're going to join the hands of Pastor Parsley. So we're going to hand these out. We've got them in our usher stations and our ushers are going to go up and down their, their, their rows and aisles. I want everyone to at least take one because, you know, this is a real need to admit one ticket that we're going to give to people we work with neighbors, friends, family, and again, that one or two enemies that won't be enemies anymore because they're going to come to Jesus. Take as many as you need because we're going to hand them out this week. And then as we hand them out, we're going to say, hey, 10 a.m., World Harvest Church, let's, I'll meet you there or, or we can meet. You can come in our vehicle or we'll drive, you know, behind each other, not beside each other, but behind. And we'll get there together and it's going to be a tailgate Sunday. We're going to have a great big party. 
But in that, the biggest party is going to be what's happening as we see hunters give their life to Jesus. And so thank you, everybody. Everyone say thank you. Look at somebody say thank you very much. Because we're going to bring someone, every one of us. And it's going to be, what a super, super salvation tailgate Sunday. Get involved. They're still going up and down the aisles. Grab them. Don't fight over them. There's enough tickets for everybody. We're going to give them out. So thank you very much. That's our part in bringing Jesus and being led by that, that passion for people. So thank you very much. You know, in revival, a big part that Father God pours out on us is his blessing. Spiritually, emotionally, physically, we understand that. But he also has a spirit that's fresh in the financial realm. And this evening, we're going to bless our God. We're going to invest in his kingdom. But more than that, we're going to worship him tonight by bringing to him what belongs to him, his tithe, and our love gifts of offerings, which are his too, because he deserves our worship in the financial realm, in the resource realm. There are envelopes in front of us that we can use. On the screen again, we're going to see that there's how to give smart giving with our phones. And remember, smart people give in a smart way. And we're going to do that together tonight. Online, there's an area that you'll see where you can just click and just go through it right there. So we're thankful for that. But as we grab our love and our giving tonight so it doesn't pass us by, that there is such an ingredient of financial giving and receiving in our God's presence and as we call revival. In Haggai chapter 2, real quick, let's grab this. After 18 years of being in captivity, God spoke to Zerubbabel, a leader, to Joshua, who was the high priest, the son of, uh, you know, he was uh, right there. And we got Haggai who shows up and he, he's, he's God's man that says, hey, it's time to build God's kingdom. And he said that God wants to do something. He said, you're going to shake the heavens, shake the earth and shake the sea. And all the valuables and the wealth would come into the house of God to worship God with. You see, Father God wants that wealth to come through his children that we can worship and give to him. And then he said in this, he said that the glory of God would be greater in the latter reign where Jesus is king and successor than what was seen in all the old covenant put together because of our heart's desire after Father God and Jesus. But there's a part of love in there and serving and giving. It's more blessed to yes. than receive. And as we give tonight, I want you to be so encouraged. There is a whole spiritual atmosphere change in the financial realm. It's happening. As our heart cries and desires for Jesus, his presence and the movement of the Holy Spirit. Let's allow God to use the realm that he's always called to be his, the resources and the wealth to worship him. Tonight, God wants to change our lives in the financial realm and bring great increase, debt cancellation, promotion, and just wild ways to bless us. This is the wild, wild Midwest in Jesus. But it's going to take our giving, so as we're ready tonight, thank you very much. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to just move on us right now as we just do that check mark inside say yeah father god i'm not just going to give a token give in my gift i'm going to give a a gift that allows your spirit to move because we are in revival father god right now we thank you that there is such a presence of the holy spirit here we want to thank you so much for salvation and we want to thank you father god for all that you're doing in our lives our families and our city and communities our states and countries. Father, we thank you. There's a shaking happening in the heavenly realm, spiritual realm, and it goes right to the wealth realm. And tonight we thank you, Father God, that we are totally set free to have your wealth that belongs to you, to worship you, to honor you. And we thank you tonight, Father God, as we take that step beyond where we've been before in our giving with great love and great expectation we have a great passion to you as we bring your tithes and offerings all over this church 
everyone online that, Father God, there's an outpouring of more and more and more of Jesus. Let your glory fall as we give. And we thank you and praise you for that in our churches, in our lives, in our families, in our cities. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We're going to worship God and praise Him as we give right now. Thank you.
I, I want to say, wow, it's Wednesday. Yes. How many sense the Spirit of God already moving so strong? Anything and everything is going to happen this evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we are, we're so honored and so blessed to have Phil Driscoll and Darlene Bishop with us this evening. We love them so much. They're not only great friends, but they're family with Pastor Rod Parsley and Joni and the first family. So special, so dear. And I know to all of us, they're so special and so dear. Our pastor has just gotten off a real long ministry trip and he's right now getting strengthened and strong and resting this evening because he leaves early in the morning to go minister some more all over this world and every day we pray we pray for our pastor because in revival God is saying take this message of Jesus and Pentecost to the world so thank you so much for standing with our pastor every day in prayer he said I'd be here tonight but I need a little bit of rest because tomorrow I'm out early preaching Jesus thank you so much all the intercessors I want to say that Phil and Darling, you feel like honorary Canadians because they've both been with us several times in Canada over the years. We love them dearly, but more important than that, not honorary Canadians. They are citizens of heaven. And tonight I know there's a message and an assignment and a purpose and destiny that God has placed upon Phil Driscoll to bring to us right here at World Harvest Church to lift up Jesus and change our lives and our world. Let's give a great big World Harvest welcome and love to Phil Driscoll. You know, I really think we should just do that song again so I could do it with you. Come Is on right? now. Would that be all right? Yeah. Not that I really know it, but I can figure it out, maybe. <laughs> well, I'm never gonna let you down. Go ahead. Oh, start. I'm never gonna let you Start the verse. Do the verse. Do you the want verse. the whole song? Well, I want the whole song. Oh, the whole song. Let's do the whole song. Because <laughs> the man of God said. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Let me down. Let me down. Oh, you're never gonna 
flowing down on me. You sing that. I got a river of life flowing down on me. Get again. I got a river of life flowing down on me. Well, it makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Well, that hope is prison doors. Set the captives free. I said, I, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got a river flowing on the inside of me. I got a river, got a river life flowing down, flowing down, flowing down on me. When it makes the lame to walk, makes the blind to see, makes the cripple wanna dance. Makes the ladies lift their voices Makes the men who want to shout Praises to the few Cause we all got a river of life Flowing down on me Makes the lame to walk And the blind to see And it can open prison doors Open prison doors set I got a river, I got a river flowing down on me. I got a river, I, I got a river flowing from the inside of me. Makes a lane to walk and the blind to see. sweet to know that you are my river Lord. It's so wonderful to see that the river is inside of me. Ooh, and I think that I can make it. Something on the inside of you going through cause you got a river of life flowing down on the inside of thee. Say it with me. I got a river of life Flowing down on me Whoa, and it makes the lame to walk, to walk And the and blind, and the blind to, to see okay. Well, it opens prison doors Said, well, it set the captives free I said, I got a river I got a river uh, yeah. Flowing down on me, me. Hey, And now I said, oh, let the river flow Let the river flow down on me well it makes the lame to walk and a lion to see you and me man open prison doors set the captives free I got a river got a river got a river of a life flowing on me now take me somewhere I got a river flowing on the inside of me Make the lame to walk and the blind to see. Will it open prison doors, set the captive keys free? Yeah. Well, I got a river of life flowing down on me. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow on me. Let the river flow. Let it flow on me. I got a river of life flowing down. 
on me. Well, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice no, 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 to worship all of you. Whoa, my star, <laughs> you're the reason I can rejoice. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. That's nice. Uh -huh. Oh, let it be a sweet, sweet <laughs> sound in your ear. You know, I don't know whether y'all know this or not, but the first jam sessions that were ever held in the earth were not held in bars. Did you know that? Woo! The first jam sessions ever held in the earth were held in the temple. And the musicians that played had to have played for 25 years. Or they couldn't even pick up their acts. And they had to have memorized the four books of the law, five books of the law, and be able to quote them at will. Hmm. So when you open your Bible and you see Selah, you know, right? Right? You know, the, don't look at me like you know what I'm talking about. You, you open your Bible and you see Selah, you'll see a thing that says pause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. People paused and the musicians began to improvise spontaneously. Ad lib, jam over what had been spoken or sung. So, when you guys take a break in the middle of a song, you all should not be looking at how cool they are when they play. You should be reflecting on what had been spoken or sung because it opens up the doors of your heart because the law is this God opened up the dark saints while David played the harp there's something when you play that opens up the spirit to move in ways that he don't move when you just talk about it because God invented you here you go darling God invented you to sing do you realize that? You sing because God sings. He rejoices over you with, with singing. You mean God sing? Oh yeah. And every time you sing about him, he is singing from the inside of you. And if you ever get a hold of that, It'll, uh, it'll change the way you do it. You don't just do it to show people how cool you are. You do it to show people how cool he is. And when you do that, it changes the whole paradigm of it. Right? 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 Well, I never really have clue one what God's going to do. And he knows that I don't know. And if I didn't trust him, I'd be headed for the exit signs. But you know what I learned about him? In the day that we're living in this world, spontaneity will be the essence of what moves God. Throw away your programs, throw away all your vain repetitions, throw away all the dogma, throw away all the liturgy, you say, well, isn't liturgy good? Yeah, if God tells you to do it. If he don't, don't be stuck there. Rod, I know you might be watching. I'm just going to tell you this. I remember you in a little white church 
First time I came, there was a little white church and there were people staring in through the windows. I mean, their heads in the windows, four or five people with their heads in the windows. But when I look around and see what God's used you to do, I know that he has chosen you to do great things and greater things because God never ever does this to us. The word says the pathway of the just or the righteous or those in right standing with God gets brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. So get ready, Rod. You going farther, you going higher, you going longer, you going louder, you going more, 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 more. And I hear, I hear, I hear the call from heaven, a mandate for you to take people higher and to cause them to be delivered from a plan that has been well crafted by darkness to cause the world to see no difference between a believer or a sinner. To see no difference in the way the man lives when he gets Jesus as if Jesus were an alternative lifestyle. No, he's the only lifestyle. He's the only life giver. He's the only one that has the power to turn a world that's upside down and fix it. Not by some man's power, but by God's power. And when you understand that, be a part of the change. Don't live in the past. Don't get hung up in the past. Don't be bugged by what's happened before because it don't matter. Look to the future because our God is in the middle of the future. He's in the middle of the now. Now is the beginning of the future that God has planned for you and 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 me. So we got a reason to rejoice. We have a reason. Oh, should I do this? Because we live Let me, let me have it for a minute, man. Because we live in a planet that is fouled, because we live there, we have fallen prey to many things that had nothing to do with God. But don't ever think that God Don't ever think Oh, I had the wildest thing happen to me this morning. I woke up in the middle Come here man, you. Yeah, you. You're gonna stand and play this thing. Or you can you can sit right there and I'll just turn this off. You just play right there and there's a pedal. Okay. Paint pictures. Now don't play it like a piano. Now go here. Who was Lucifer in heaven? Oh, what did he do? Paint this. Who was Lucifer in heaven? Talk to me. Who was he? Sit down so I can count out and talk to you. What was his job? 
I can't hear you. What was his job? No, he wasn't. That wasn't his job. The really praise really doesn't exist in heaven. Oh wow. Now watch a lot of sacred cows are gonna go. <laughs> Only one time in the whole Bible that praise is mentioned in heaven, it says, Praise you, you angels, you creeping things, you dragons. Because praise is not a force for heaven because there's no wars in heaven. They've already been won. Praise is a force field to cause victory to be in your domain. That's why God created it. That's why he told you to shout, not in some church service, but to shout because he has won your victory. The way God does business is in the law of fair exchange. It's not whatever time it is in heaven right now. I lost my watch, I gave it to Darlene. It's not eight whatever in heaven. When Joshua told the children of Israel, well, before that, when he blew the ram's horn around Jericho, he was announcing God's presence. You can take this to the bank. Any believer that makes any sound that costs him something or her something has just invoked the presence of God in their life. That's the law. God cannot stay away from sounds that are made in his honor. That's why the devil will do everything to steal your sound because he knows the dead praise not God, neither them that go down in silence because silence is the accompanying sound of defeat and a loud sound is the accompanying sound of victory. That's why we cannot make a soft sound. We have to make a sound that's filled with victory because victory is born in a shout. Victory is born in the dance. Victory is born in the clapping of the hands. But it has to cost you something. It can't be this. It's got to be that. Because something happens. There's so much. Listen, what happens when you clap your hands? When you clap your hands, what happens? What happens? You cause a disturbance in the air. Who is described as prince of the power of the air? When you wave a banner, boy, religion hates that. When you wave a banner, I was watching you, Cal, when you were walking in the front. He was doing this. And you know, worldly people would think he's a fruitcake. But when you lift your hands, see, when you wave your hands, they do it at a rock concert because it's a form of praise because all music was designed to worship someone and whoever you worship you want to become like them you want to wear what they wear you want to say what they say you want to sound like they sound you want to be like they are. That's why <laughs> when you worship, something comes on the inside of you that causes you to want to be like God. So if, if we understood what kind of sounds heaven has, when you understand that there's no fouled sound in heaven. There's not a sound that goes against God's word in heaven. There's not a sound of defeat in heaven. There's not a sound of sadness in heaven. There's no sorrow in the sounds. There's no turmoil in the sounds. There's no distorted lifestyles in the sound because the sound of heaven is a pure life-giving sound so when you make those kind of sounds you have to realize that you've just joined the sound of eternity and joined the sound that god makes now paint this god God didn't create. He didn't create music. He didn't create all those 
cords. He is them. You can't go to Re you can't go to Genesis and say, well, God created melody here and he created harmony there and he created rhythm there. No, he is. He is rhythm. He is harmony. He is melody. And it's then from Alpha and it will be to Omega. That's why when you get God in your life, he puts a sound of heaven on the inside of you. And it devastates darkness. It devastates defeat. It devastates all of those things. It's not just a song service. It's not a preliminary event. It is the main event. And so much in the church. The church, listen to me. Hollywood has impacted humanity in the earth to judge the performance of a church service as if they were spectators observing a performance for their benefit when it never was designed that way. It was designed to be a performance for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords. It was designed to cause all of heaven's power to be released then, then, not tomorrow, and not so someone could preach with a greater anointing. That's an obvious. Now watch. The word says God opened up the dark scenes. Well, David played the harp. In other words, revelation came. Why did the revelation came? Because the sounds that were pointed in God's direction invoked God's presence. I think I told it the last time, but what changed my life forever is God told me, I don't care. I don't care what kind of sounds you make. Now watch. He's totally gifted, right? Totally gifted. But he don't know exactly where I'm going and I don't know where he's going. You want to know why Lucifer was so powerful? Because the timbrels were built in him. He didn't play the drums, he was the drums. The pipes were created in him. He didn't play the pipes, he was the pipes. The only thing he can't play is the brass. God reserved it for himself. You may not know that, but that's the deal. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Thy workmanship of thy timbrels and pipes were created in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou was perfect in all of thy ways till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise thou hast profaned thee. Isaiah said, thy pomp or thy high flying ways will be brought down to Sheol or to the grave. Vials are woodwind instruments. The only thing missing. No mention that Lucifer could play the brass because the brass is the signature sound of royalty. The brass is what will announce the return of Jesus. The brass, the sound of the trumpet, the trumpet of God will sound and the dead in Christ will rise and we will be alive and meet him in the air. That's the God. You think God, you think the devil has ever been able to pull anything off on God? Get another thing. Because listen to me, watch this. Let me have it for just a minute, can I?
When God created Lucifer, he knew he would fall. But he never took him away from his position because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He never said, no, I know you're going to blow it, so I'm taking away all of your gifts. If you blow it, you have all of your gifts intact because God never took anything that he gave a man or a woman because of their works. He gave you the gift to propel you into your calling, to cause you to be able to do what no one else could do. Don't be me, I can't be you, but when you be you, nobody can touch you. When you do it for God, and when you understand that Lucifer When he began to say, I'm going to ascend up the sides of the north and I'm going to become like the most high God. I am going to be like him. And all of a sudden his sound became contaminated and that's where God discovered the iniquity that was in Lucifer. And by the time that he had discovered it, it had affected one third of the angels and God kicked them all out because his atmosphere will never be demolished. It will never be put unpure. It will never cause death. It'll never cause darkness. It'll never cause defeat. It'll never cause anything that he didn't intend man to have. That's why when we lift up our voice, you play now. When we lift up our voice, you join heaven's symphony. If I can only get you to see it. Now, when I, when I listen to you, I don't think there's a better worship sound in the earth right now than what God gives you here. But you can never have the, the thought of being a side man because the devil, for years, he has made musicians. How many of you are musicians or singers in this place? Lift up your hand. He has told you all a lie that the music or the sound is some kind of a preliminary thing that we just warm up him with. No. You, the Dale Cumrod, that you'll have your musicians will begin to play hours before people walk in because the atmosphere will be filled with the presence of Almighty God. And when they walk in, They'll feel his presence before anybody says anything. They will encounter the most high God. Let's do it like right now. Let's pretend no one is here. No one's here. No one's here. No one's here. <laughs> Now just play real soft for a minute. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord's anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He sent me to heal, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. feel God's presence Lord you are a hiding place for me you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance you go play what you got go ahead you go to your place you are a shield before me you deliver me from my presence from my enemies and my cup runs over my cup Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days, 
all the days of my life and I will dwell I will dwell in the house of the Lord house of the Lord I will dwell I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever and forever. You know what will happen when people begin to walk in? They'll get healed. They'll get delivered. God will restore marriages. God will put a new song in their heart because all of a sudden, heaven opens. If it could be preached in the world that it doesn't matter how great the man or woman is that plays, but it's the purity of the purpose of their heart that ignites heaven because sounds in God's honor will always open the heavens. Always open the heavens. Sounds in a man by himself in a desert that lifts up his voice unto God will open heaven. Sounds of a man in prison that lifts up his voice will open heaven and sometimes the prison. When God is acknowledged, heaven stands at attention to operate in the fullness of his power and authority. But you cannot get it for a moment and walk and get in the zone of the world and expect God to hang out with you because he does not live in sounds of fear, in sounds of confusion, in sounds of defeat, in sounds of sorrow. Oh, no! He said sorrow not because he has been wounded. This, he received our sorrows when he was bruised and he hung on a cross. So we don't have to be there. The devil knows that when the body of Christ captures the essence of why God put a song in you, it's over. I said it's over. I say again it's over. But what has to happen, there has to be an awareness in the believer that the reason the sound is made is not for your enjoyment. It's for God's participation. What he told me was years ago, he said, I don't care how many notes you miss and I've missed a billion. I don't care about that. He said, I can't stay away from sounds made in my honor. And there have been times that I played sounds that weren't in his honor. I was thinking about Burger King. Just because you have a gift doesn't mean you are anointed. Just because you have a gift doesn't mean demons tremble when you play. They only tremble at the presence of God. Now, here's one thing. If you can put yourself in a position, it's the only thing I think of when I play the horn. I'm introducing God. That's all I ever think of. Don't play predicated on what somebody's going to think about your playing because you can only play about 60% of your ability. Don't sing as if you're gonna impress someone with the greatness of your ability because it's not, a break, it's not about the greatness of your ability, it's about the greatness of his ability because it's ignited and you know what happens? I promise you, I'm playing better than I ever played, I'm singing better than I ever sung because you know why? I do not ever live on what notes I made yesterday. I never live on how great of a performance it was yesterday because today is not yesterday and whatever you blew is yesterday. This is today. We are children of the light. 
we walk in the light we expect miracles we expect God's deliverance we expect God to show up and you know what I tell you when you get right down to it I wasn't gonna do this but I'm gonna do it Darlene got talking to me about expectancy I'll just share this with you. I probably, you probably won't like it, but I don't care. <laughs> I got 17,000 hours plus in airplanes. Yes, and I've flown a lot of airplanes. And I use, I'm a technology freak. Okay, I love technology. Because when used properly, technology is a blessing. But now I'll just share old school with you for a minute. When any computer begins to dictate what kind of song you sing, you just lost the human part that God gave you and you will never influence humanity. You will influence a culture, but you'll never get God in it because he doesn't need a computer to sound great. That doesn't mean you don't use it. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? When you read an iPad or an iPhone or a Galaxy or a Samsung or whatever, what happens is you get so many imprints on your optic nerve surrounded by digital black. That's what that is. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, the, it's the picture black, the picture black, the picture black, but about a thousand times in a second. So when I shoot an IFR approach, I'll do this if I have to, but I prefer paper because my retention level is much greater with paper. Help us. And when you understand that, don't throw away your Bible for God's sake. Please. Don't throw away your Bible you. because in your Bible are notes made by a man or a woman when God puts something in your heart and it's not like highlighting a verse with some kind of picture because your soul is in that page and you know that you can go to a particular page and find something that God did for you and instantly you see it it's like this when you were somewhere and you heard a song it put a time stamp on you a song does that the Bible does that and don't think that you can grow in God by listening to a television evangelist you cannot do it because there's a reason. If I sit down, give me, move your purse for a minute. If I sit down beside you and I'm in trouble and you love God and you're tracking and he's tracking, the God on the inside of you and on the inside of you begins to come into me. And the same way, if you get by somebody and you're tracking and the God on them is non-existent, they tend to pull the God out of you that's why the law says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together because do this the more as you see the day approaching. A blind man could tell the day is approaching. A blind man could see that this is the day when men's hearts are failing them and God's people are beginning to rise like cream. We are not the chosen frozen. We are not the lonely and disgusted and busted bunch. We will be filled with wealth. We will be filled with God's provisions because if you start reading the word, you'll find out that the glory and wealth are tied together and the world is looking to see the true sons of God who are not afraid and not fearful and not silent anymore. Oh. Ah. Now you know what? Now, there's so many things. Uh, the greatest tragedy that I see in praise is it's been sequestered in some church. Help us. No. This is simply where we practice our weapons. The way God does business 
is in the law of fair exchange. When you go to a ball game and you're a fan, you make a loud sound when there's a great play. Your sound equals your perception of the greatness of the play. Spectators don't make big sounds. They're not a fan. But when you become a fan, which is short for fanatic, of God, and you understand that polite applause is illegal praise. This is not praising God. Oh, well, let's give God praise. No, that does not pass the sniff test. I'll show you why I proved to you. You think this white boy is just bending your ear. It says, now I'm going to use my iPad. You can look at it in your Bible. It says, Isaiah 29, 13. And the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but remove their hearts and minds far from me, and their fear and reverence for me are a commandment of men that is learned by repetition without any thought as to the meaning. Boy, that nails a lot of places. That's in the Amplified. Matthew 15, 8 said, all in the, in the contemporary English version says, all of you praise me with your words, but you never really think about me. It is useless for you to worship me when you teach rules made up by humans. <laughs> when our hearts drift from God, worship takes a back seat. Now, because I don't know much about I, I don't know a tenth of what Rod knows about the Word. But I have one call. When it comes to praise and worship, I'm a general in God's army. And when you realize that this, this thing called praise is not just something that you do when you come to church. This thing called praise is a force field that God established before the world was so that we in the middle of a battle could sound a shout of victory that ignites heaven's firepower in our battle and we win we can not be defeated if we do what the word says and praise him according to his excellent greatness now look look Everything the word says to do in praise, you do at a ball game, but it's in the natural order. And you know, to be honest, Pentecostals talked about the sacrifice of praise as if it were something was so bad that it took everything you had to exert a shout. But that's not it. See, I'm not receiving an offering. You ready? God is looking at what you do with his tithe, but he's really looking at what you do with your money. <laughs> oh no, y'all, y'all got real quiet. When God said, clap your hands, there wasn't much of a reason in the natural. When God said, dance, all of those clapping their hands, dancing, shouting, making a joyful noise, a loud noise, are what they do at a ball game when they win. The devil knows that. And he knows that if he can steal the sound of victory from you, he has just stopped heaven from exerting their firepower in your battle. 
So he'll just paint pictures of doom and gloom until you can't see what's going on and you sound based on what you see. That's why the word says if your eye be single, that your body's full of light. If you get your eyes off what the television says and get your eyes off of what the newspaper says and get your eyes off of what this guy says and that guy says and all the calamity guys and you say, Lord, you said I'm young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You've always supplied a way for me, so I just give you praise. See, if you don't have a bullet, if you don't have a bullet in your gun, you ain't gonna kill nothing. Lots of Christians, they go, but they got no revelation as to why they shout as to why they're clapping their hands, as to why they're making a loud sound. Don't let them tell you to turn it down, turn it up. Don't let them say, no, we don't do that in our church. Turn it up. You turn yourself up. You turn yourself up and watch what God does for you. Now listen, now listen, the weapons, the weapons of your warfare are mighty they are strong you take and put a bullet in your praise in your battle if the doctor said you're going to die you find the word that says by his stripes i was healed no weapon formed against me will prosper and then you begin to sound as if from the core of your being that was the reality of your life you can't sound soft. You can't sound quiet because it's illegal. It's not a fair exchange. You cannot make a little sound in a big battle and activate heaven. You cannot just sort of lift up your voice when you go to church and lose seven days a week minus one hour. You cannot lift your voice once in a while that's why the word said, let the high praises of God be continually in your mouth. That is the fruit of your lips, giving thanks unto the Lord. I have no idea, where's my watch? You don't need a watch, all right. All right, you ready for just a minute, for another minute? Let me see. What happened to those guys? They quit. Oh, here's one more. In your church, Rod, you should make it man. I, you probably do. If I don't know, if I don't know, just don't shoot me. Let's take. Let's not say your church. Let's say any church. Any church where they can play. Now, some of them need to quit anyway. If you can only play four chords, learn about 20 more because you'll be skillful. That's what made David dangerous. He was skillful. He knew how to make sounds that would cause God to move and he could paint pictures and cause the evil spirit to run. Here's the law. Here's the law. As the air is that you breathe supports human life, so is sound of spiritual forces. Confusion cannot live in sounds that are heavenly. No. What makes it sound heavenly? The heart of the one playing it. I'm going to say it again. What makes it sound heavenly? The heart of the one playing it. So that's when David walked into Saul. He began to play the harp. The Bible says the evil spirit departed, why? Because he didn't have life support. Nobody laid hands on him. He ran the devil off because he can't stay in sounds that invoke God's presence. Remember, God can't stay away from sounds made in his honor. You don't have to sing. You don't have to be some kind of talented guy or girl. Just make sound. Ah, the Bible says, open your mouth wide and literally I will fill it with something to praise me about. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. 
Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. I won't do it. In the Amplified Bible, it says, God has ascended amid shouting. Now, I tell people that I'm not a trumpet player. You hold that for me, brother. Would you hold that for me? I'm a trumpet. I will say it again. I'm not a trumpet player. I'm a trumpet. I don't play the trumpet. I play a piece of plumbing called a trumpet. But that trumpet never made a sound. It's an inanimate object. Like you. When God touches you, he puts the sound of praise inside of you that causes you to be unable to make an earthly sound in his honor. You have just joined artillery forces of heaven. When you lift up your voice, you have just made a sound that is, the devil cannot tell, the devil cannot tell any difference in the sound that you make and the sound that God makes. He thinks it's God. When he hears, when he hears me play the trumpet, he thinks God's playing. Incidentally, yeah, you can shoot me later. The Bible says when the trumpet of God shall sound. Who do you think gave me the talent to play? God. If I had a son who was gonna split the eastern skies and I said, there's gonna be a sound of a trumpet and I said, it's gonna be the trumpet of God I have a sneaking suspicion that the first time the world has ever heard a trumpet really sound is gonna be when God picks up the horn and begins to blow and announce his son. Oh, now you can say you're crazy, but no, man, God plays, God sings, God shouts. You think God didn't know how to play the harp when heaven invented the harp? Who do you think invented the harp? Who do you think invented the trumpet? Who do you think had that kind of power? The God that you serve. And when you get that in your heart, it changes everything. <laughs> God has ascended amid shouting. But now listen, don't just shout. Here's the law. Let a man give not grudgingly or of necessity. When a shout is made because you're mandated to shout, okay, this is a practice time. But when you shout out of a pure excitement and expectation Amen. that when you shout, you just ignited the fire power of heaven in your life, then that shout will activate all of heaven's fire power in your life. One of these verses says, it says Psalms 42. I, there's so many verses. We could be here until Jesus comes. Psalms 40, 42. Let me look. Lord, you are a hiding place for me. And I like to amplify because it's loud. Lord, y'all didn't get it. Lord, you are a hiding place for me. You surround me. And I'm going to get it before I sing it to you. Lord, you are a hiding place for me. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Oh, now, if you don't remember nothing else, would you please remember this? Lord, you are a hiding place for me. If God is a hiding place, he doesn't do anything bad. So you got the best hiding place on planet Earth. Lord, you are a hiding place for me. And you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Now, if I just say that, you go, well, that's really nice. But 
Come here, brother. Wait. Come here, brother. You the, you the, you the short ring, you the round ring. Start running around me like this. Run around me. You surround me with songs run like you mean it and shouts of deliverance. You surround me. I am surrounded by you. The sound is coming out of me. The sound is coming out of you. God is surrounding you in that sound. <laughs> in that sound, God is surrounding you. You, 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 darling. God surrounds you with songs and shouts of deliverance. Deliver I'm almost done. Sit down. Jesus said, Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to. I'm going to sit down for a minute. Oh, yes. Let me see. coming and now is and true worshipers will worship me in the spirit and the truth my father is seeking such that will worship him why did he say that must be something in it for us. What is it that makes heaven eternal? What is it when Jesus said, I have food to eat that you know not of? Is it just a song? Could it be that in heaven, the reason God is worshiped, because we know he does everything in the law of sowing and reaping. We know that when we give to God of whatever we give, we know that he releases back to us good measure pressed down, shaken together running over could it be that when we lift our voice when we bow when we forget about everything that's going on around us that life of God is infused into us and that all of a sudden things change And sickness has to go. And darkness has to leave. That confusion and fear cannot stay. Could it be that God is looking for worshipers so that he can pour out his goodness, so he can pour out his love, so that healing, I'm talking major miracles, could happen. I believe that we're entering into the day when the glory of the Lord will fill this place. When blind eyes will open, Deaf ears will come unstopped. 
in every place when the name of the Lord is worshipped and adored I believe that God is looking from the portals of heaven through all of the din of things that happen in churches for one here or one there who will lift up their voice I believe angels will begin to sing on earth like we've never heard them before I believe these are the days when the glory of the Lord will fill the earth like the waters cover the sea it's time to no longer just talk about it it's time to experience it it's time for us to set aside all the the, the re rituals and traditions that have so held us and just know that God above all things desires our worship it's not just the singing of a song it's the falling prostrate on the ground it's bowing your hearts and your minds and your your physical body and it's not about a show see if when you and I just lift up our heart that's what God's looking for he can't stay away I pray that in this church the fires of a new song new sounds heavenly melodies new songs from you new new manifestations of sounds corinthians says there's no sound without signification every sound that's made has significance either to darkness or to light don't expect light to come when it's confusing which sound you're staying with you can't begin to praise god and walk out and talk about your defeat it cancels opposite sounds cancel don't let your sound be a sound that is discerned sometimes by light and sometimes by darkness because you'll never walk in the high places that way keep your eyes single keep your sound single let your sounds be sounds that cause heaven to stand up and say we bear record that you have won that's what happened when Jericho fell they they began to bear record and they heard the sound of victory before the the walls ever crumbled heaven has the ability they're not linear they're they're, they're not locked in time that's how God can restore what the canker worm and the pomegranate has destroyed he's not bound by our time he can go back in the middle of your challenge and turn things and rearrange things and make bad things good he can do all things that's the God that we serve let's give him the biggest praise of the whole if 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 you know that you know that God has just changed the sound on the inside of you and the understanding lift your hands toward heaven Lord you see all of these people I put you on record I put heaven on record listen to their sounds let their sounds do what you've called them to do let them know beyond a shadow that heaven has been infiltrated with their victory, with their song of redemption. And we give you the praise. Oh. Hey, Darlene, let Darlene come up here. Come here, baby. She said, Praise God. Well, I know that we're going over a little bit on time, but let me just let me just give you this one thing and to show you how powerful praise is. There was a man that came to me eight years ago with cancer. 
and they were getting ready to do some treatment because it was, he said that it just, they gave him just a few months to live. And he come to me and he said, Darlene, if you can get a word from God for me, I need God to move. I began to pray for brother Chris. And I said, God, if you've got a word for him, let me give it to him. And the Lord spoke to me, Pastor Rod, and he said, you tell him when I get my praise, he'll get his promise. He told me the other night after eight years, cancer free. He said, if I had not a praise God, he said, I would have been dead in my grave but oh grave where is your victory you don't have no victory when somebody's a praiser oh let everything that has a breath praise ye the Lord hallelujah glory hallelujah praise God come on brother Cal God bless you all let me just say this we're going to be at the Bible College tomorrow from 10 to 2 and from and then from 2.30 to 4.30 we're going to be there four hours teaching on praise, worship, and the sounds of heaven. Praise God. And let me just say real quick, I know I'm not supposed to say this, give me those CDs, where are they? We have several CDs back there and and we got a teaching that he does about sounds that will change your life, I promise you. This one, Phil and I pray to this every morning called the Songs in the Key of Worship. And I wanna tell you something, when you hear this, the anointing is so heavy on this. I weep every, every morning listening to this. And so he's got so many drops of praise. He was the first one to ever record I exalt thee. Shows you how old he is. But anyway. But anyway, they're all out there and we'll be out there. But if you buy two, he said he would give you one free. So anyway, we love you all. This is my favorite church in the whole world. I'm telling you. If they ever run me off from Solid Rock, I'll be a member of World Ho Well, I'm a member anyway. I'm a member anyway. Yes. And I'll tell you what. I love that man right there. He's been a friend of mine. I mean, that's closer than my brothers. And I thank God. God bless you all. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, there is a shout of triumph that's in us tonight. Jesus off his throne, dancing around us tonight. Whoa, Phil, thank you. Let's give a great big thanksgiving of honor to Phil Driscoll. Darlene, we want to thank you for everyone that's been online with us tonight. Do not miss Sunday. Sunday, grab your friends, grab your family. We're going to be together at 10 a.m. with Pastor Parsley. You don't want to miss that. For the rest of us, this service has...